Hey folks, Gary here with Paramount. So I bet you can never guess what today's video is on. All right, we're gonna be talking about shooting bags. And this video actually started off as one of the training lessons that I was producing for our online training academy, which if you haven't checked out our virtual training academy, make sure you go check that out. Uh, if you want real training, I know not everybody can come to our courses, not everybody can train all the time, but what we do is we provide you real training that is efficient, that is practical, that is realistic. It's real training with real results. Go check that out. It's at our Patreon. I'll put a link down below. Uh, and on top of that, not only do we give you training that you can take to the range, use a limited amount of ammo, a limited amount of time, get real results. But on top of that, we give you lots of discounts and, and, and lots of other benefits as well. So uh, also, if you're interested in supporting us through Patreon, we have different uh, different packages and different benefit plans on that as well. So go check that out. But that's what this started off as, as basically a lesson on positional shooting for our virtual training academy. It's hard to talk about long range without getting into a lot of equipment and that opens up a whole nother Pandora's box. You know, shooting bags, there's lots of different options, but as you can see, it can get real complicated real quick. So I'm gonna break it down for you and I'm gonna make this simple. I'm gonna make sure that you understand the different types of bags that are available, why you would use them. And I also wanna talk about the different principles behind shooting bags themselves. And, and that, if you understand the principles behind them, it, it makes the, everything a lot easier. It makes, you know, choosing the type of bag, how to use those bags, all that stuff. It, it just, again, it, it'll, it'll clarify things. And then at the end of this, I'm gonna give you a very quick tutorial on positional shooting, or at least some principles behind that. But if you're interested, again, in getting real training, where we provide you a one hour lesson plan every single week that you can take the range and get real results with, make sure you go sign up for our virtual training academy. I promise you, you'll enjoy that and it'll be a lot of fun. So before we get into the different types of bags, let's just talk about the principle behind shooting bags in general and what it is that they're doing. Basically, when we're talking about shooting bag, whether we're talking about you know putting our gun on one of these shooting bags or we're talking about using one of these positional shooting bags to put and support different portions of our body to alleviate muscular support. Because folks, anytime that you are supporting the gun just with your own body, we're introducing all these different types of micro jitters, uh, these sympathetic movements, all of those things. And in general, what these bags are doing is they're dampening those. They're also providing you a place, a, a softer place to put your gun, which will help manage recoil. It'll help support the gun, make sure it's not moving left or right. But the main thing that they're doing is dampening and removing all of these tiny little movements or some people even larger movements, but they're allowing to support the gun. They're allowing us to support our own body because again, we're getting rid of gaps in between our body, whether we're on the ground whether we're up shooting, whatever it is. So that is generally what they're going to do. And we'll talk more about that. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the three main types of shooting bags and how you're going to use them. The other thing I'm going to talk about is the bags that I think you need at a minimum, as well as kind of if you're going to buy your first shooting bags, uh, what I'd recommend to buy first. So let's get right into that. All right, folks. So the first bags we're going to talk about are absolutely essential. I do not shoot long range without these bags. And that is a rear bag or a squeeze bag or a sand sock, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they control the elevation on your gun, essentially. We're putting these on back here behind the buttstock or the bag rider. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But we are holding this with our non-shooting hand and we are squeezing this bag to decrease the elevation on the muzzle and then to increase the elevation of the muzzle. We, we basically push that down a little bit. And I'll probably do another video and kind of tutorial on how to use that or even some of these individually, but we'll get to that. This is the Tab Gear large rear bag and this is a straight lace bag. If you're sh watching me shoot a video, I usually use, I have both of these pretty much within arm's reach. Depending on the terrain, depending on what's going on, how much elevation I need, if I'm shooting it down into a defilade or I'm shooting up, whatever it is, basically I'll be using one or, or both of these bags. Sometimes I actually use these in conjunction with one another. I need a lot of elevation. Sometimes I'll stack these on top of each other. But these, I highly recommend that you get both of these. And again, they're on our website. Links for all this are down below in the description you will not go wrong with these two bags. Um, again, depending on the terrain, depending on what's going on, depending on how your gun's built. Sometimes I use them right underneath the bag rider. Sometimes I'll actually have them up underneath here. Um, 
very versatile. We can also use these as positional shooting bags where I can press, put my gun on top of this if I need to. I've done that before. Uh, same thing with this one, but both of these are great bags. Both of these you can get on our website for under hundred bucks. Now the question is, well, Gary, why don't you just use a monopod? Well, going back to the kind of the principle behind using a bag is a bag, the bags are going to dampen all of those sympathetic movements that we constantly have, whether we're talking about just our heart beating, uh, us breathing, just the constant incessant movements that our body is producing all the time. It helps dampen those or remove those completely. And that's why a bag, in my opinion, is better than a monopod. Now, we see right here on my gun, we have a, an adjustable bag rider. This is, I'm getting ready to shoot a video on this. I really like this. It does the same thing as a monopod. It allows us to have these very fine adjustments, but with this, I'm also using either a bag like this or a leather bag that is still allowing me to dampen those sympathetic movements. Um, so that is a great device. This is a great product. You'll see a video. They'll be on our website soon. Going back to rear bags, no matter what, I'm still going to have one of these and one of these within arm's reach. I use those all the time. And if you're shooting long range, you need a rear bag and you need to practice using it. I'm telling you, it'll make your life much, much easier. So keep that in mind. All right. So the next bags we're going to talk about are the barricade bags. Now, all of these bags you can see are very similar in design. And there's just going to be situations where any one of them will be incrementally a better choice than another one. But, you know, ultimately, they're all going to work and they all do the, almost the exact same thing. So over here, we have the Armageddon gear. These are this is the OG game changer in a duck canvas. Uh, excellent, excellent bag. So I, I really like actually all the game changers, including the Schmedium. It's just a smaller version of this. The other thing that you need to know is that these bags are going to come in. Uh, you can either get them a standard weight or which is, I don't know, this one probably weighs five, six pounds uh, or the lightweight. And this one weighs, you know, I don't know, less than half of that, probably a quarter of that. So you can get some of these in the lightweight ones or the standard weight ones. I'll just tell you right now, generally speaking, the heavier ones are going to work better, but you know, whether you're packing them out or for whatever reason you want a lighter one, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I will say, generally speaking, the heavier ones are going to stay in place on the barricade better. And the way that these works, if you don't know, generally speaking, we're going to put these on the barricade like that. And they provide, again, that, look, that, that area that we can put our gun on, that we can sink that gun down into and just get a better shooting position. And again, you'll be able to watch the tutorial after this. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But all of these are excellent choices. Now the game changer, the improved version, has these straps on here where you can actually strap this to the gun. Um, so there's that. Uh, so out of these, I probably end up using the OG game changer probably the most. And then right next to that, the Schmedium. The Schmedium is a great bag too, kind of an all-purpose bag. Over here, again, very similar design. We have the Wee Bad DRC fortune cookie and the Whiskey Charlie mini fortune cookie. I think I got that right. Basically the large and the small fortune cookie. There again, we got them in a light fill, standard fill, and then we have these, both of these are standard fill. But these are great because they do have this kind of very sticky and tacky um, material that sticks onto your barricade and, and the same thing here. Now, with these bags, you can get very creative, right? Don't get stuck into what well, Gary said, or I saw somebody just do use my, you can use these in so many different ways. I end up throwing up on a barricade like that, like this, and putting the gun long ways across there sometimes. Sometimes I'm just using them in that traditional, how they're kind of designed, but you can use these in many, many different ways, right on top. Sometimes I'll do it just like that. Move this other way. So if you have enough room where you can put a it does both. It kind of squishes in and supports that gun, but also provides you a nice dampened area where we're going to find a really good stable shooting position using that. So either one of these are great. Um, I, if, if you're thinking about getting into PRS competition shooting, number one, if you're just a hunter, if you get one of these in lightweight, I think this is a great option for out hunting. If you're just sitting in a stand, it probably doesn't really matter. You probably have some sort of device that's going to support your gun. But if you're out there doing a stalk, doing some long range hunting, one of these lightweight ones, this only weighs a few ounces. And this is a really 
it's going to build you a really nice shooting position when maybe you don't have time or it's not a good position for a bipod or a tripod. So this may be something you want to use for hunting. But if you're doing PRS, I would say at a minimum, get one of the large, either one of these, and then one of the smaller versions of these. So, you know, nothing wrong with getting a game changer and maybe, you know, the mini fortune cookie. So there's those. Now there's some, also a couple of hybrids. These are also kind of barricade bags, but we can start using them for different things as well. Now this one I do use quite a bit, it's the grippy flat bag. This is designed to actually Velcro over the top of your fore end. And now this is essentially staying attached to your gun. If you know you're shooting off barricade. This is a really nice, quick use, easy bag to, to use. And we have a, a you know, a, a kind of a grippy surface there and a grippy surface right there. But this is a great bag to use, you know, if you're shooting under like 300 yards, this is a great bag to use. This thing for how small it is, it does a great job dampening all those little movements. And on top of that, providing a good, nice flat shooting surface. Um, just very versatile, very lightweight, very easy to use. And there again, it's staying attached to your gun. Now over here, we have the WeBad Tac Pad, both the mini and the standard. You can use this not only as something that you can actually lay your gun on, but now we're also talking about something that we can use for positional shooting, getting in and actually getting to where our body is nice and stable and dampening those movements and, and filling gaps that allow us to move around. One of the things we always talk about in our tech carbine courses is people that shoot, you know, an AR with their chicken wing out here, way out here. Number one, that's not good for when you're trying to shoot around cover. But on top of that, just from a fundamental standpoint, it creates a lot of movement and it's moving that barrel around. Whereas we bring that elbow in, we tuck it in, it's just giving you a more stable shooting position. And that's what these do. You're basically filling gaps, whether they're in your arms or in your legs or between the gun and your body. Um, and I'll talk more about some of the positional shooting, but these kind of do both. The WeBad Mini Tack Pad, we can use just like the flat grippy bag from Armageddon. It's designed to be, again, we're strapping this around our gun, it's staying attached to our gun. Or there again, we can use this for positional shooting support. I could also use this in a pinch, I wouldn't wanna do it all the time, but we could also use this as a rear bag. So this is a very versatile bag. Both of these are great versatile bags, as is the grippy flat bag. So, and again, as you can see, all of these come in different colors, some different materials, they're slight variants. Don't get wrapped up in all that. If you wanna do long range shooting and you plan on doing some positional shooting, get you one of the large ones, just pick one, and one of the small ones. That's what I recommend. These are great too. I would say that these start getting into more specialized so get those, practice with those, and if you start competing, there might be some instances where these might be a better option for you, but at that point, you'll have the experience under your belt to where you can decide which one of these are kind of gonna fit what you, you want to do, right? But these are where you start, and these are gonna give you a really good foundation, a large one, a small one, will give you a great foundation on positional shooting and using barricade bags, and then you can kind of go from there more into the specialized ones. All right, folks, so now let's talk about the actual positional shooting bags. And these are what is basically going to go between usually your body and possibly the gun, but mainly, again, under the arms, uh, underneath, in between, you know, if you're bending down between your thighs and your legs. These are going to provide or even sit on these. I've, I've actually sat on these. That helps a lot, too, where we're not trying to support our weight with our legs, which again, is just gonna cause a bunch of micro jitters. So there's a ton of different ways to use these. Uh, you could also use these, lay the gun on them, whatever it is. And these bags are the Armageddon Gear Fat Bags. This is the large, this is the what they call the big ass. Uh, they also have a medium size. This is actually the Wee Bad Tack Pad, but it's about the same size. The large fat bag is about the same size as this, just for a reference. So medium fat bags and the wee bad tack pads are kind of interchangeable almost as far as size or even in use. But I do want you to notice on the Armageddon gear fat bags, which I really, especially this large one, I use this one. It's very versatile. I use this all the time. I definitely think this should be your first one if you're going to get one. Also, folks, for hunting, um, I used to teach some long range hunting courses. These are just 
awesome for hunting, especially there again, if you're going on long range hunts where you're stalking, this is just a great multi-use bag right here. Very versatile. Um, not only can we use it for all kinds of things when it comes to positional shooting, whether we're putting the gun on top of it, whether we're putting it to support our own parts of our body, but it's also great, we can use it as a pillow. And this is very lightweight. This is less than a pound. I don't know what the weight is, but, uh, and I want you to notice that this bag is, is kind of tapered in many different spots. So it's wider at the base here, um, same thing on the sides, but that's great because now we can actually put this in between different portions of our body, behind the legs if we're kind of in a crouching, kneeling position. But this is a great bag. The big ass bag definitely is more of a specialized bag. There are many times out there where I've found really great uses for this. Also even sitting on it and then using this up here to support the gun or another bag to support the gun or under an arm, whatever it is. But these are great, but I would say that these are a little bit more specialized. Um, if you're buying your first positional shooting bag, I highly, highly recommend the Armageddon Gear large fat bag. You'll find lots of uses with this. And if you train with this, you'll definitely be able to shoot in improvised shooting positions um, at great distances. So great bag overall. There are a few other specialized bags, but that is kind of your main three categories. We have the rear bags, our barricade bags, and then our positional shooting bags. And I'm telling you right now, if you start off with the ones that I suggested, those would be a great first purchase for you. You'll get lots of use out of them. And, you know, especially if you're going to start competing uh, or hunting, if you're out there hunting in the field, those are really helpful as well. All right, folks. Well, I hope that took a complicated subject and made it as simple as possible. I'll do additional videos on the actual implementation of this. I just wanted to keep this portion of this video as short as possible. I will also say if you're serious about getting more proficient in handgun, carbine, and or long range, folks, go check our virtual online training academy. We're going to offer a lot of great courses there, and I think you'll enjoy those and get a lot out of them. And always, and as we build up a library of those courses or those lessons, you'll be able to go back and find exactly what you're looking for, take that to the range, have a plan that we know is going to work that's created by professionals, and those lesson plans are just going to help you train a lot more efficiently. It's going to make sure that you're getting the most out of your time, the most out of your ammunition, and ensuring that you're going to improve as well. And that's really what it's about. All right, so before we go outside and we talk about the principles behind positional shooting, if you like content like this, make sure you like, subscribe. Make sure that you're following us on Rumble. I don't know if you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble, but make sure you're following us on Rumble. We're going to do most of our gun content over there. And also check out our other social media sites. We do a lot of cool things on those, so make sure you're following us on there as well. And make sure you join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time for our live Dangerous Liberty podcast right here on YouTube and Rumble. We cover many different topics. We talk about guns, gear, politics. We have special guests on. You, the audience, can interact with us throughout, ask questions. It's a lot of fun. I think you'll enjoy that. So come see us every Wednesday. All right, so what we're gonna do now, folks, we're gonna go outside. We're gonna talk over some positional shooting. So I'll see you out there in just a second. I have some barricades and some other things that I could be shooting off of, but I wanted to make sure that I was using something that I thought you guys would have. Now, if for some reason you don't have a ladder, there's all kinds of different things that you guys can use. It could be off the bed of a truck. It could be uh, a fence post. It could be anything nice and stable. The other thing I wanted to include in this that you should be working into your training, if you have a tripod especially, um, work through using that tripod at different levels, at different positions. All right, so these guns are clear, by the way. We've cleared them, everything's safe. There are basically two approaches you can take to a shooting position. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna call them an active and passive shooting position. But when we have a shooting position that's not sturdy, like this light ladder. So I got this heavy duty ladder over here that weighs about 60 pounds. Um, and then this light one weighs like 15 pounds. All right, I can't be very active and aggressive on this. Typically what we want is we want a good aggressive shooting position where we're leaning into that gun and we are making sure that we're managing recoil. The more that we can lean into that gun and hold that gun still, the better that we're gonna manage recoil. But we don't always have that option, right? So what we're gonna do in a situation like this, is we're gonna figure out what bag that we're using. Right now I'm using the Schmedium. I just happened to grab that one. And 
we're gonna take a much more passive shooting position. One thing that you've gotta be constantly aware of when you're doing improvised shooting positions is your bubble level, right? Especially when shooting a distance, but you should just be in a good habit of always constantly looking at that. Number one, we need to make sure that we're shooting with both eyes open and we're constantly aware of the position of this gun and making sure that we're not introducing cant, which you can have the best position ever if you have that gun canted a whole bunch and it's easy to do, while you're doing these types of things, you're gonna introduce a miss. And then you're probably gonna dial or correct based on that miss. And then you might have the gun upright now at that point. And then you might miss again, because now we've had that gun in a different position and you know, you're just creating a, you're creating a snowball effect of problems. So make sure that you're constantly aware of your bowl and you're constantly aware of your parallax. But because what I'm shooting off of isn't going to allow me to be aggressive and lean into it, I'm taking that passive shooting position and making sure that my gun is nice and level. And all I'm doing is using this to hold the gun for me. I can't put a lot of pressure on it. As a matter of fact, in this situation, if I start putting a bunch of muscle into this and leaning into it, trying to reduce the effects of recoil, I'm gonna cause more problems that I'm gonna fix. When you're in this passive shooting position, you're gonna, you're gonna experience some recoil. You're gonna come off target. But what you're essentially doing in this, this situation is you're betting on that first round hit. Right, so you're not gonna see your trace, you're not gonna see your miss or impact, um, you're probably just betting on that first round hit. So just be aware of that and be aware of what you're shooting off of and understand there are times when we're gonna have a mixture of those, it's fairly stable. I can lean into this just a little bit, right? But I can't get too crazy with it or I'm gonna cause more problems than I'm fixing by doing so. I gotta make sure that my gun is level and I'm working that bolt, right? So we work that bolt. And that's a whole nother, whole nother video and a whole nother skill set, working that bolt so that you're not throwing your gun way off target. All right, so right now I'm, I'm basically, this is all I'm doing with it, right? If I can hold it there in this position and then just do one of these where I'm just, where it's level and I pull the trigger, yeah, it's gonna recoil. Yes, when that gun recoils, I'm gonna come off target, but that's what I have to work with. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so that's our passive shooting position, if you will. All right, so now we have a much more stable shooting position. Right now I'm using, I was playing around with in this particular situation with this particular obstacle that I'm shooting off of. I'm actually using the mini fortune cookie after playing around with a couple of the bags. In this situation, that was one of the better ones. And I have this flipped where I'm actually using it where the bottom portion of that in the gun, the bottom portion of that is laying on the step of the ladder and this portion I actually have the gun resting in. So after playing around with it a little bit, I was able to find, for me, this is the best position. But because what I'm shooting off of is, is much more stable, all right? I can actually lean into this now. Now I'm leaning into this and I actually have, notice on the gun, is we actually have a barricade stop that I'm pushing into the bag. So I'm leaning forward, I'm also checking my bubble, and what, and right here, this feels level to me because I'm on uneven ground. The ground is like this. We're probably at like a two or three degree slope at least. All right, this feels level to me, but I look at my level, I'm not even close, right? So we got to, there we go. Now that's, and it feels completely wrong, but that's what the level says, so trust your equipment. So now I'm leaning into this. Folks, I could sit there and probably shoot, you know, one MOA group the way that I am. I'm leaning into this. Uh, I have a good stable shooting position. I'm gonna be able to see my trace in this position. I'm pushing up against that barricade, I'm holding on, and I'm leaning into it. I'm going to control the recoil in this position all day long. And if you're watching this on the Training Academy, we're gonna do some shooting drills, some grouping drills, and do some things uh, from these different positions to where you can kind of practice this and get better at that. And if you're not watching it on that, make sure you go join our training academy and or come train with us in person. That's what this really is all about, right? So now I have that grippy flat bag up there. I love this bag. It's very nice for especially 500 yards and in. Uh, whether I'm taking that active or passive shooting position, it is very good. I can get that thing right up against the barricade stop on this. This is the Seekins. I just did a review on this. I have the zero, so I'm out here just getting some more rounds through it but I really like that grippy flat bag. It's also a very thin bag, so that even when I have this magazine inside here, 
with that barricade stop, even though it's a very shallow barricade stop, it's not gonna cause any shooter-induced malfunctions because that bag portion is gonna give it clearance, give the magazine the clearance that it needs to shoot. So this is also another great bag. It's very versatile. And we'll talk about doing some of these things with an AR as well. But even this very aggressive, I got a very aggressive, I'm leaning into this probably with like 20, 30 pounds. I'm nice and wide, I'm getting my feet wide, wide and low. All right, that's the principle behind stability and getting in a good shooting position. The wider and the lower, and the more relaxed that you can be, the better off that you are. So I'm just leaning into this gun, I'm stabilizing, I'm checking my bubble, I'm checking my parallax and making sure that those are good, making sure I have good eye relief, applying those fundamentals. And there again, working that bold. All right, so any of these bags work. It's a matter of finding one that you like, finding one that makes the most sense to you and working around it. I would also say there's a good argument to be made for buying like the larger and the smaller version of this. I would definitely say get a game changer, either this one or the larger one, and then get the Schmedium or there again, getting the larger fortune cookie or the smaller fortune cookie. There'll be times when either one of those is, is, is a better answer to the other. So. Um, keep those in mind. The other ones, you can start working in. Folks, if you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble, we're gonna go ahead and end it right there. We really do appreciate your support. And you know, while guns and gear is great, this is what we're really about is training. So make sure you go to ParamountTactical.com, go check out our upcoming training schedule. We'd love to have you out. We'd love to meet you in person. We have long range courses, tactical carbine, hanging courses, medical courses. Our instructors are, have the experience at the operational experience as well as the instructional experience. Most of our instructors are former special operations. All of them have at least five years teaching at a federal agency and or in the military, and they have real world experience as well. And that matters, that matters a lot. So anyways, until next time, stay armed, stay ready. We'll talk to you soon. Storm is coming, but I'm prepared.